Hey everybody and welcome to Ages Goes to Crochet Corner where today on the corner we're going to be doing hexagon sweaters again. So I just got finished doing a tutorial on hexagon sweaters but I love it so much that I wanted to do something different. So I decided to do the hexagon sweater with the granny squares in the back. Um, so instead of adding that extra space just using our granny clusters we're just going to be doing granny squares which gives an extra added pop of color so grab your favorite yarn grab a hook and let's get right to the table okay everybody so we're at the table what we're going to need for this project is yarn so with um I'm using four medium four waisted work yarn and these are 744 yards per skein. I used about one and a half of these. Now we're going to need a hook. I'm using a six millimeter hook. I do do this also with a 5.5 millimeter hook, but it's going to take me more rows to do to equal out the same amount. Um, so it's up to you. It would just change one of the elements in the piece, which we'll get to later. And I'm using my yarn needle in order to weave in my ends at the end. And I have my scissors so I can cut off when I am ready. Now, other than these two main colors, I like to put a little pop in this piece. So I usually tend to do um, basic colors here and then put a pop in the middle so i've made a few of these and of course you've already seen them from the beginning and this is where my pop of color comes in this is what we have here now i only need three of these because i'm making this with a six millimeter hook so you want to make sure when you're making your squares for the middle and this is going to go and join both of your hexagon pieces together you want to uh, just make sure you have the same amount of clusters here adding up here as you do on your piece we'll get to all of that later but because this is the only place where you're putting that color each one of these you don't need much you can use scrap yarn to achieve your middle um, pizzazz pieces but we'll go over that more just talking about materials you won't need much of these colors like you see here because unless you're doing more adding that colors other places you won't need that much more what we're trying to achieve is a hexagon piece that once folded at all its corners is going to give you a piece large enough for your arm to fit through of course this is always going to be way roomy um that's what i love about it it's so cozy but it's roomy I have 18 rows on this one um, with my six millimeter hook when I did it with a 5.5 millimeter hook. I think I had about 20 rows all together. What you're going to do is we're going to make this piece two times in the exact sizing that you would need in order to fit your arm in comfortably. So you're going to keep growing this for any size until this is going to fit your arm and comfortably all right uh to your liking now again mine was 18. now rose now i'm going to show you how to make the hexagon piece now i want to make the exact same piece over again so i'm going to be starting with my navy blue i'm going to twist my hook around my yarn chain one Pull up to lock that on and now I'm you can begin this with a magic circle I don't want to I'm going to chain four now once I've chained four I want to go into the first chain grab my yarn and pull through see I'm kind of going to tuck that and grab this at the same time and slip stitch through the other side going to chain up three and that's going to stand as my first double crochet and I'm going to place three more double crochets in order to have my first cluster of three double crochets I'm going to chain one and I'm going right back into this hole and I'm going to 
chain three no and I'm going to make three double crochets and chain one and I'm going to keep going and I'm going to make three more double crochets And then chain one we want to keep doing this until we have six clusters of three double crochets so we'll go back in and place three more double crochets and chain one three more double crochets And chain one and one more set three more double crochets and chain one I have six sets of three double crochets with a chain one in between I'm going into the first chain three that I placed at the beginning of my row I'm going to slip stitch into the top of there and then I'm going to chain three I'm going to work right into this chain section that I have right here okay right here and I'm going to go back in there and place two more double crochets because this chain three is going to hold the space of a double crochet This right here has become half of my first corner. We'll finish off that corner when we come all the way back around. Now, one thing I am not doing, I am not putting chain ones in between all of my clusters. I did here because this is the base for the corners that I'm going to be creating on this, the second row. But that's the only time that I'm going to put chain ones is in my corner. Um, you can put chain ones in your whole project in between everything um, and it would make your project grow faster and be looser. I want more of a, a I wanted my stitches more closer together. So I'm not doing that, but that is an option. All right, so I'm going to yarn over and I am going into my next chain one space and I'm going to place my first whole corner. So our corners are going to be three double crochets chain one and back into that same chain one space I'm putting three more double crochets mm -hmm. my next chain one space I'll make another corner We'll go inside there and place three double crochets. Chain one and three more double crochets. And my next chain one space, the same thing. We'll go inside there and we'll place three double crochets. chain one and three more double crochets and we'll do this all the way around so we have another one here we'll go in and place three double crochets chain one and three more double crochets all in that one chain one space and this is our last full one so we'll go in that chain one space and place our three double crochets chain one and we're going right back into that space and placing three more double crochets 
Now, this is the corner we started with, and I said we'll come back and we'll finish that corner off. So we're going to go into that space, and we're going to place three double crochets. Chain one, and we're going to slip stitch at the top of the chain three that we started this row off with. Now I'm going to change colors here. I'm going to cut my yarn and I want to chain one and just pull that through. Right. Now, always to start again, I always go through a different section, but we always want to be starting inside a corner and we'll make half of our corner. And then we'll finish that corner when we come back around. So I'm going to go into one of my corners, my chain one spaces, and I'm going to place my yarn on, chaining up three. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going right back into this corner and place two double crochets because my chain three stands as my first double crochet for that cluster. And now that we've done all our corners on the second row, we see we have all these little pockets that have come up in between our corners. We're going to be going in each of those and just placing three double crochets. So for the pockets that we have in between our corners, we're going to go in and place three double crochets. And our corners, you see this is a corner, we're going to go into that chain one space and we're going to make another corner and our corners are three double crochets chain one three double crochets mm -hmm. into this pocket section we're going to go in and just place three double crochets and into this section right here we have a corner so we're going to go into the chain one space and we're going to place another corner chain one and we're going right back into that place and placing another we're going right back in and place another cluster of three double crochet. All right, pocket gets three double crochets, corners, we just placing what we get in the corner. All right, so I'm going to go all the way around making my corners and placing my three double crochets into the little pockets all the way around and we come back to a corner and we're going to finish off that corner that we begin with three more double crochets chain one and slip stitch into the top of the chain three that we begin with and we're going to chain three. It is at this point in time where you're going to notice your piece starting to curl. That is normal. That's what it's supposed to be doing. Your piece will start to curl. Um, now we're going to go all the way around doing just what we've been doing. We're going to start with this corner. So we're going to do half of this corner. And then we're going to keep going on. All these pockets that we keep creating they're just going to get a cluster of three double crochets. Our corners will get what our corners get. Three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets. And we'll go around all like that. We have two more pockets. So that's going to get a cluster of three. That's going to get a cluster of three. And then we're going to do our corner again in that chain one space. And this is just going to grow. Our corners will always be what our corners is. The only thing new that we'll get is little 
pockets that'll become more of them and we'll put chain three there all right so remember that first stitch we chain up three and then we're going to go right here to make half of our corner and then we'll just keep going pockets get three double crochets in our corner we'll we'll replicate our corner again making three double crochets chain one and three more double crochets And we'll do that all the way until we come back here and don't forget we have to finish off that corner so we'll go into this corner place three more double crochets chain one and then slip stitch into the top of the chain three that we began with if you're switching colors which i will we'll be switching colors every two rows then you want to cut your yarn chain one and pull through if not you're just going to chain three and keep going all right and when you're switching colors be sure to always start again in a corner all right you want to start in a corner so you can make half of that corner and you'll finish it up when you come back around it keeps it nice and neat so we already know i have the bigger piece finished so i'm going to bring that bigger piece and explain these little side blocks to you so i got to 18 rows and that was good enough now when we're building our squares our squares are going to go in between because we technically would have two pieces like this in between those two pieces we need more space so in order to get the space that we need i'm going to make blocks okay so we will not be going over how to make a granny square in this video if you need help learning how to make a granny square i do have a tutorial available on my channel making a granny square now the number of blocks will depends on the number that you need to fit let me turn this to the side so we can see all of this okay the number of blocks you're going to need is going to be determined by how many clusters you have okay so i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen 18 clusters right. so that means i need the same amount here to put here and these are one two three four five six so three times six is 18 so therefore i have my 18 clusters when we join these together we will not be looking at the corners we're just looking at the cluster one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen all right now i told you on my other one i had um that i did with a 5.5 millimeter hook i did 20 rows so if i did 20 rows i have four blocks each one bringing me five okay so that's the space that you're getting here right i will show you again the one that has five uh four blocks with five in up close uh let me do that now so you can see that so this is the one with the four blocks and our four blocks are five rows each and with the five rows we then have one two three four five clusters on the side so since so this adds up to 20 and it keeps in line with the 20 clusters that run down here because this is 20 rows so i wanted to bring that in just so i can show you what it looks like with four granny squares that when you put the four granny squares in no matter how many of them that you're using you just want to make sure you have the same amount of 
clusters on your hexagon piece as you do once you add up all of your squares. Okay, so let's go back to the other piece. Okay, so now you see the difference. Um, and I'm just doing that because depending on how big you make yours, it, it'll be, it might be different. So if you have different styles, um, different size blocks, then mean you'll still be able to understand what you're doing with your size. And as long as this piece is the size that you need, if you have to add a row to make sure you can make three or four or whatever equal blocks, then just add another row here. Um, a little more room will still make the piece look very, very nice. Now, that is all about sizing. Now, what we want to do is go ahead and join these. We'll be joining these with simple single crochets all the way down. And then we'll get it added on to this one. Now, I'm only going to demonstrate the, the joining one time. Uh, because it's really basic so we want to make sure this is the front this is the front we want to make sure the fronts are facing each other add our hook into the corners on both sides these are identical pieces so it should be very easy just to slip stitch in or single crochet all the way down so I'm going to grab my yarn and pull that through and chain one I'm going back into this corner, grabbing my yarn, come up, and now making a single crochet. And now I'm just going to match my stitches. I'm going to go in the first one in the front and the first one in the back and make a single crochet. And you're just going to do that all the way down. I'm just making your single crochets. all the way down and you're matching so you're looking at the clusters all right so I'm putting I'm in the first one on this cluster I should be on the first one in the cluster in the back and that's it we're just going to go corner to corner to connect this piece. And we're at the corner. Pull that up. We're going to cut our yarn chain one pull through and we open it up and there you have it so now we're going to place this one down the same way the two sides facing each other and we're going to add this together in the exact same way okay so just like that we have this all put together and this simple join is also how we're going to close off our hexagon piece. So let me move this out. And let's bring our finished hexagon piece back in. Now this is the right side. We're going to fold this. And now that you have your desired length, this being on the wrong side, we're just going to close off the top of our sweater from here to here doing the same stitch we just did which was entering in the corner here both corners in the front and in the back and we're just going to single crochet all the way down here joining front and back together they should be identical matching sides so when you're adding it together Wherever you are in the front, it's the same place you should be in the back. So I'm going to go into the front and I'm in the first stitch in that first cluster in the front. I should be in the same place in the back. Grab my yarn, come up and make 
a single crochet. And we'll just do that just as we added our granny squares together all the way down till we get here. And then we're going to end off right into that opposite corner, into the next corner. We'll cut our yarn and chain one, pull through. Now we have our other side and we have this side. Now I've already placed this side on the right side. I'm going to open this up and place this one on the right side. Now I'm going to take my piece that I've made to go down the middle and I'm going to lay that down on its wrong side and it's going to fit right in there. So now on this side, just the back piece, see this is the front and this is the front. So I'm going to kind of move that out the way a little bit. So now we're going to add this on right here down the middle. Now I want to make sure I'm using the back side here. And we're going to start in this corner here. And we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. And again, we'll start here on the back side, not the front side. And we'll start in this corner here. I'm going to move one side out the way. trying to work so we can look at this a little bit better and again just like I showed you we are going to be adding this on here just make sure you move the front side out of the way and this is just getting added on to the back piece all right so I'm going to go ahead and add them on we're going to add it on with a simple single crochet just if we didn't did everything else we're going to start in this corner and start in that corner now when we are going down this we have our what was a corner right here these spaces we're not looking at these spaces where our joints are and we have two corners together we're just looking at the clusters so we're just matching our clusters together all right so one cluster here and then right here we're going to go right into this cluster here so we're just looking at our clusters of three double crochets the joining area we are not paying that any mind so we want to go ahead and match our clusters up and this is what i mean we will not be going into the chain one space mm. right here from our previous corner nor over here we're going to go right into the top of the next cluster matching this cluster with this cluster mm. Now I made it all the way back to my end. Now just like we started in the corner on the opposite end, we want to go into this corner and this corner and make our last single crochet. Cut our yarn. And chain one, pull through. Okay, so now we have one side added. We want to go ahead and add on the other side okay everyone so this is wild so my footage actually uh, got loss of me showing you how to go around the piece so once I added my two sides together and you see we had our blocks 
and we added both of our hexagon pieces on either side. Um, I took and showed you how to do six rows all the way around. Starting at the bottom, we went all the way around and up our piece and came all the way back around and then came back along the bottom all the way till we got back to where we started, which was here, right? And the only thing we're doing is when we get to the bottoms of our piece, we see we have a corner. That's the only corner we're keeping. So we're going all the way up and around our piece. I did six rows and this right here is the corner and which we're going to keep. So I'm going to show you that real quick. Um, I'm ending right here with six rows, but I'm going to actually demonstrate how to go up and around because it's a little jump from adding on just the sides together, putting this together, and then putting on these six rows. So in order to start... We want to work on the bottom and I ended with the navy blue so I will be starting right here where my tan is so I'm gonna bring my hook back in and remember when you're starting you are starting here almost what would be the middle and I'm gonna start right here I'm gonna chain three and that's gonna stand for my first double crochet then going to go right back in and place two more double crochets. I have my first cluster. Now we've been doing cluster work. So we're going to go in every available space that we normally would put a cluster. And we're going to put a cluster of three double crochet. That is not changed. And again, we're going all the way across the bottom. And then we'll go up and around our whole entire piece. And then come all the way down and back around to here. So once you add on, you're simply just putting your double crochets. Really don't know how my footage just jumped like that. But... We've done so much of this cluster work and we've gone around this piece so many times by now that I feel confident that you totally get how to go all the way around. So we're just going to keep going until we get to what looks like a corner. And that's that part right at the bottom before you turn and go up your piece. When you get right there, you will go into this corner and place a corner. Three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, and then go all the way up and all the way around. We fin When we come all the way back around and we finished our last cluster, we're going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three that we begin with, grab our yarn, and pull through. We're going to chain up one, two and three and then this space right here we're going to go into that space and start now i'm just doing two colors so after this row i'll cut off and i'll go switch to my next color so that's how we're going to do that and we'll just keep going i did six rows because i want to put a border on now once you do this, this is how six rows look, you can keep going. You could do as many rows as you want to do. You can do more than six rows. This is what it looks like with the additional six rows starting here. So I have my six rows now all together. Doing it that way, I added my six along with my bottom. So if I want to be finished, I could be finished now. But I want to give you the visual of placing a different border. We'll just do front and back posts there. So 
Again, sorry that that footage got lost, but I think we got this, okay? We're just going to go all the way around, like I said, six rows. So now what we want to do is we want to look at our arms. So now looking at our arms, if you tried this on, you see that this arm falls short. Now, if you're going for that, that's fine. But we're going to go ahead and grow this arm. Now, I usually put 10 rows on my arms. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. And mind you, what we do here is the same thing we did from the bottom all the way around our whole entire piece. It's the same idea, only we have no corners here where here where we had two corners at the bottom. And here we have no corners. So I don't want to, usually I would start from my seam, but with the hexagon sweater, the seam is at the top. All right? So we want to go follow where our beginning is and we want to find what kind of looks like the bottom and we're going to add our yarn on since i'm keeping with the same color scheme of my next color will go back to the tan now i'm going to just take and add my yarn on and chain three and go right back in and place two more double crochets and I'll just place one one cluster of three double crochets all the way around the whole entire arm here Okay, so I've come all the way back to the beginning. I want to slip stitch into the top of the chain three that we begin with. And I'm going to chain up three. And I'm going right back into this space and putting two more double crochets. And then I'll keep going. See, that's where our join is on our sleeve. Yes, I went into each corner. Went into each corner and placed one cluster of three. So we're going to keep going around, putting one cluster in between all of our clusters. And once you get to 10 rows or whatever your desired row is, we're going to go ahead and get a hook that is one full size. Now, this is a six, so we're going to bring in a five millimeter hook in order to finish out the rest of the sleeve when we come back on. But we'll finish out with this hook. Okay, so I have finished my arm and I've added on 10 rows. Of course, you see our joint area right here. So I begin here, two, four, six, eight, and 10. So now my arm is, could be done. So if you like the, that uh, ending, you can of course end right there, but I told you I'm gonna put that little border on. So I was using my six millimeter hook, working my whole entire piece. I will go back to this to finish the border on the bottom and around. But right now I'm gonna move that out and I'm bringing in my five millimeter hook because we wanna reduce the size to this in order to put that cuff on it, the sleeve. So I wanna reduce down to a five millimeter hook. So I'm gonna go in with my blue because I want to keep with my color schemes and we'll finish this off in blue. Right. Now I'm just going to going to get my yarn on and chain one. 
I'm going to go right back into that same spot, grab my yarn, come up, and place a single crochet. I am then going to go to the next stitch and place another single crochet. Now I'm going to be decreasing. So I want to go into the next stitch, grab my yarn, come up, go into the following stitch, grab my yarn, come up, and I have three loops on my hook. I want to yarn over and take off all three like that. So again, our pattern for this row and the next row will be two single crochets, one in the next two stitches, and then the following two stitches will decrease over. We'll go in, grab our yarn, come up, go into the next one, grab our yarn, come up, three loops on our hook, we'll grab our yarn and take off all three. So that is how I'm going to be decreasing. It's going to be two single crochets, then decrease. Show you that again. We're going to be doing two single crochets. And then we'll decrease. Go into the next one, grab our yarn, come up. Go into the next one, grab our yarn, come up and then take off all three loops on our hook and go back to making two single crochets in the next two stitches and then go in, grab our yarn, pull up, go in, grab our yarn, pull up, yarn over and take off all three. So we're gonna keep this pattern up which will decrease this row And we're going to do the same on the next row. Two single crochets and then a decrease. Two single crochets and then decrease. Now I'm coming to the end of my row and I have two single crochets left but even if you only have one single crochet left it doesn't matter how you end as long as you keep the pattern so whatever comes next comes next um it doesn't matter if you're able to finish that pattern all the way out and then we're slip stitching into the first single crochet and chaining one now right where we chain one we want to go right back into that space and make a single crochet that counts for our first one the next stitch we'll place another single crochet and then we will decrease over the next two stitches and we'll keep that pattern up for the second row two single crochets and then decrease Okay, so I've come always to the end and I ended with just one single crochet. I wasn't able to finish the pattern out, but again, that's fine. You just want to keep the pattern going until you can't uh, go any further. So I'm back to where I begin. So I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the chain one that we begin with. And then I want to chain up three. That chain three is going to hold for that first stitch. So I want to go into the next stitch and I want to place a double crochet. We will now place one double crochet all the way around so we come back to the beginning. So one double crochet in every stitch. All the way around. Okay, so I'm back to where I began. I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three that we begin with. And then I'm going to chain three. I am always going to keep these chain threes um, unworked. Okay, they will only be chain threes. So I'm going to yarn over and the next stitch, which is a double crochet, we're going to go right behind that double crochet, grab our yarn, come up, and make another double crochet, which is pushing that forward. And then we're going to yarn over, 
And the next double crochet, we're gonna reach behind our work to go in front of that double crochet, cross over and come out on the other side, grab our yarn and come back up and make another double crochet, pushing that back. So we'll be doing front posts and back posts, alternating all the, all the way around this sleeve. So front posts and go on reaching in the back, going out the other side, grab our yarn and come back up, back posts all the way around. Okay, so I am back to the chain three that I began with. And I'm just going to slip stitch in that chain three, top of the chain three, and then I'm going to chain three more. Now, this is the last row, and with this row, all we want to do is go all the way around and keep what we've already done. So, this is a front post, so I'm going to reach behind it and keep it a front post. back post so I'm going to reach behind to go in front of that double crochet grab my yarn and come back up and keep that a back post so this row is just going to be to keep what we've already established in place now again this is my last row so I'm going to go all the way around slip stitch into the top of the chain three chain one and cut my yarn chain one and pull through so I'll be done this so now our sleeve is finished we can do the same on the other side make sure we're using our five millimeter hook but now I'm gonna put that hook away and with both of our sleeves done if you choose to just wear it out like this then you can, but I'm going to show you how to put the same border we put on here, kind of. Uh, just those last three rows we're going to put on the bottom and then all the way around. So we're going to start with the bottom of our piece. And we're going to be working the bottom and up the thing separately. So we're starting right at the bottom in that corner that we established. when we were working all the way around the outsides of our piece. So we're gonna go in that corner and we're gonna add our yarn on there. And we're gonna chain up three. We want to go into our next stitch and we're going to place one single crochet in every stitch until we get to our next corner Okay, so I've come to the end of this row and I stopped right in that corner and I'm going to chain one and turn my work. Okay, now that I've turned my work and the first and the last stitch, we only want to place a double crochet. Meanwhile, every stitch in this row is going to get either a front or a back post so i'm going to yarn over and just like our sleeve we're going to start with a front post and then we're going to do a back post and we're going to alternate front post and back post And we're going to do just like we did with the sleeve. We're going to do this and I'm going to continue this for four rows. Remembering the first stitch and the last stitch are just double crochets. We're not going to be working our front and back posts in our first stitch. Okay, our front first stitch will only be front double crochets. So when we get to the end, we chain one 
and we turn our work. And I'll show you how to end it and begin again, just one more time. Okay, so I've come to the end of this row and remember that last stitch will only get a double crochet. Chain one and we're gonna turn our work. In the first stitch and we're going right back into that first stitch. We're just going to make a double crochet and then this row and the fourth row. We're just going to be maintaining our pattern. So we already have a front post. So we'll go and make another front post and we already have a back post. So we'll go behind it and make another back post and we'll continue that for as long as you want it, but I'm just going to do four rows. So it'll be this row and one more row. And we're just going to keep with that pattern. Um, front post, back post, front post, back post. Keeping just a double crochet at the beginning and at the end of our row. Okay. Okay, so I've finished my four rows. So I want to cut my yarn. And chain one, pull through. Now the same thing we did on the bottom is what we're going to do all the way around the piece. Right. Now there is really no difference going all the way up and around the piece back down. Uh, the only thing is right here we are working on the sides of stitches. Now here we already have our stitches. You know, our first row is double crochet. Our second row is going to be front and back posts and our continuing rows will just keep up the row pattern of the second row. First stitch will always be just a double crochet and last stitch will always just be a double crochet. But here we're working on the sides of our stitches. So what we want to do right here is we're going to have to go into the sides of our stitches in order to establish our double crochets. So starting in the corner. I just want to chain up one and then I'm going right back into that same place that I just punched through and making my double crochet. Now, for each double crochet, I like to do two double crochets. So for every double crochet laid on its side, I'm just going to go in it twice and make a double crochet. That way you know your number count stays even. Just going right through that double crochet and placing a double crochet. Right. Okay, so that's all we're going to do right there. And I'm going to go into my corner right here. And then start going into my stitches. Mm -hmm. So remember, double crochet all the way around. That first stitch is just going to get a double crochet. Everything else on the second row will get front and back posts, and then you'll keep that out. And you'll keep that out for as long as you want to go. I'm probably going to do the same four rows that I've done here on the bottom. But if I do any more, of course, you'll see. All right, so go up and around your piece, four rows or more, and I'll come back in and show you what that looks like when it's all done. Okay, 
So I have finished putting on my border right here, um, up and around the collar, and I did six rows. So I thought six rows would look best um, around, and you're going to do whatever it is that you like to do. So we've done our bottom. We have our arms done and our borders put there. So we're finished this piece other than weaving in our ends. Now, I'm not doing it with this one, but I may do another one exactly like this and add these elements. But once we finish, you can always put a pocket here. Now we can make our pocket just a square like the back squares and put that right there. That would give a pop of that back and bring it into the front. Um, if you like that idea, you would just make one granny square as large as you want it um, or identical to that one and put it right about here. Or you can take a triangle um, and I have a tutorial for a triangle on my channel and you can also make a triangle keeping in your same color. So when you place it, it'll be just like this and put the same ridging as this, the edge on the edge of that. I'll see if I can get that done um, so you can see the visual, just how it might look if you add pockets. Cause I like pockets, everybody knows I love pockets on the front of your piece. Uh, this has many options that you can do from here. Remember, you can even make this longer uh, using the same methods, but you're just gonna grow the bottom once you put this together. Uh, this is absolutely one of my favorite hexagon cardigans that I've made. And uh, let's get right to the ending and I'll see if I can put the other elements on there like a pocket just so you can see how it would look. Okay, so everybody, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So um, we did not go over the pockets, but as you see on this one, I decided to do the triangle pockets. And on this one, I just took a granny square and put that, um, made the granny square exactly like the back and just put that right on there. So you got everything, you know everything. Meet me in the comment sections if you have any questions. Until next time, I'll see you on Asia's Crozy Crochet Corner.